I might have been for the best putter fitting in the world. But what did I get fit for? And has it actually helped my putting? Let's go find out. So a few months ago, I went for a 2000 pound putter fitting at the Ping Performance Research Center. Now this is all for the PLD line. It's a completely custom range, meaning you can basically get any putter you want, whatever finish you want it, whatever you want on the club head, whatever you want on the sole, any shaft, any grip, it's all included in the price. And also is the experience of the fitting process. And it's definitely something different than I've ever had before in terms of going and get fit for a putter. So this is basically a tour level fitting. And there's a few key things that I really liked about this. The first thing was that Ping have their like cradle that they pop on the putter and they give you a handicap on different putters. So it measures loads of different metrics, looks at how consistent you are, your speed, your start line of the ball, and then spits out a handicap for different putters. Every time you hit a pot, that will register on the screen. Mm -hmm. So we'll get these segments that will turn blue. Um, and then one of those, each one of those puts will appear on the screen. So we can start, while you're putting, we can start kind of getting a good idea as to what happens within your stroke. Now for me, and for a lot of club golfers, I think that is really helpful because sometimes when you pick a putter up and hit a few putts with it, it's really hard to know which one's the best and which one's actually helping you out the most because you might be most consistent with the one that just doesn't happen to be the one that you hold the most puts with that day. So that was something that I really liked and I loved the way you could visually see that on the screen, see the data and know which one was best. I do love a good bit of data. Okay, so you can see now that this is turned green. So we'll see these either go green, go yellow, or go red. So green just means that you repeat really well of what you do in the metrics. Yellow's kind of okay, red's okay. Now, the second thing that I thought was amazing about this putter fitting process was the fact we were on a movable putting green. So a lot of the times you go get fit, it's not a very long putting green that you put it on and you can only hit flat putts. And that's great in terms of seeing how things work out, but actually you're just hitting the same putt over and over again, which never happens out on the golf course. So what we got to do is hit left to right putts, right to left, uphill, downhill, loads of variety. And that actually really changed what I ended up getting fit into. Okay, so let's go, we're gonna go through these series of putts then. So we've got um, this flat dead straight putt, and then we're gonna go uphill right to left, uphill left to right, down and left to right, down and right to left. So when you see break, <coughs> breaking points, yeah. you see straight lines you aim into a, you put into a point, I'm and you see curves. Down, line like that. Mm -hmm. There's nothing, I'm, there's no wrong, I'm just interested in how you see breaking points. So where do I have to put this? Where you think it, where you think it's gonna, you're gonna have to aim to allow for that break. Good point. Good point. What was the slope on that? Is that right? Raw one percent. Really? Yeah. So it's interesting, isn't it? Because like, I definitely saw what you saw. Yeah. Without the pill. Yeah. Now, the reason this massively changed what I got fit into all comes down to aim. Now, I'm a huge advocate of checking how well you aim with different putts when you go get fit, because if you pick a putter up and you can't point it at the hole, then you're not really gonna hold many putts with that, are you? So when we went and tested the different breaking putts in different directions, it was very evident that I was terrible at aiming with certain sight lines and certain types of putters. Oh my God. <laughs> just go through your process. If you just want to set up. You're happy, you tell me when you're happy. You aim probably, I would say, a good two and a half degrees left of the hole. For years, I've used a line on my ball and a line on my putter. It's been my go-to. I just, it freaks me out if I don't do it. But actually, my fitter, Billy, was like, mm, you shouldn't really be doing that. You aim loads better without a line on your putter. 
So I've gone naked on the top of the putter. I mean, it was a big transition. I was really not convinced about it. So let's go no lines then. So that wasn't a bad pace. Mm. Line was better. Yeah, that was, that was, you started on a way better line. Better again. Come on. So how does, how does, how does no lines feel? Is that like? It feels all right, yeah. Yeah. It's when you get outside of everything being square and. Yeah. So we've got no sideline. It's the first time ever I've had a blank putter. It's a big change, but was it the right change? Okay, so let's do a putter reveal. First off, how nice is this head cover? I'm actually obsessed with a little like crocodile print. I mean, it should be for the price, but it is gorgeous. <laughs> okay, I've also never had a putter this shape either. So everything, everything was pretty much new about this. I've gone for the hobby in the full bronze colouring. Because I love the fact it's gonna like rust up over time and change. That started happening a little bit, but I feel like it's in the transition stage, like it's not quite rusty enough yet. And I want it to go a bit more. Anyway, you can see some little pops of pink paint, obviously. Love a bit of pink. But look at the sole. It's completely customised. So I got to just like design this, send it off to the guys in the States. They engraved it into like the plain putter head after it came straight out being milled sent me pictures of it, checked it was right, did all the paint how I wanted. I'm obsessed with it. My little name, some sprinkles, my dog. Too obsessed with my dog. And just a few little nudges and the ping man. I just think the ping man's cool. Definitely, definitely obsessed with how this looks. I also went for a black shaft because I just think they look better and you know, a little bit of pink on the grip. 10 out of 10 for aesthetics, that's all I'm saying. Absolutely nailed it. Let me know what you'd get on the putter if you had the choice of anything. I'd love to see some people's ideas. Review done. <laughs> so this is like a one piece milled putter, which is very different to what I previously had in play. What I had in play previously had an insert in the club face. And what I've noticed in terms of differences, this feels really soft. I love the feeling out the center of the face, but also there's a variance. If I miss this out of the heel or the toe, I can feel that my strike is off. It doesn't feel as nice, it feels firmer. And I think that's really good feedback. What I found over time after using this for like a month is that actually I feel like my strikes got more consistently out of the middle because I just don't like the feeling when it's not out the center. So personally, I think that's a really good thing to look for in a putter, something that gives you feedback on when you've hit a good or a bad putt and then you know what to work on. So I'd say straight away when I got out on the golf course, I was loads more consistent with my mid to long range putts in terms of start line, get them to finish where I wanted. But actually the short putting initially I found really difficult without the line. I was kind of just looking down at the club and I, I wasn't sure where the club head was aiming at all. It, it made me a little bit uncomfortable. But actually as I've got used to it and done more and more reps, I found I've got really more consistent. I actually think my holding out is better than it has been, especially like my six to eight foot range, which is obviously gonna help the scoring. <laughs> so maybe that tells you to actually listen to your fitter and use their recommendations because if Billy hadn't been so adamant, I'd have probably just been like, nah, let's put a line on it, let's go for it. I would have stayed for the same. And actually that would have been the wrong thing to do. Now on the day in the fitting, I actually was a little disappointed that there was loads of putters on display to test. So you could touch every head type available, every hosel type and every shaft length but not necessarily in each putter. So if I wanted this head, it wouldn't have necessarily had like this hosel on it or the correct length of shaft for me, which I thought maybe they would have had more options for changing around, but actually they use the tech in terms of they have different measuring putters to check what length of shaft you have. They have different hosels so you can try them all out and see which is the best for your start line. And actually with what they recommended, like the length, having a single bend hosel and the club head, I've put it really well, so maybe, <laughs> I should have been a little less critical on the day because actually I think what they've recommended to me is really good. Just to show you, you should actually trust the data. Oh. So I guess that leaves two big questions. First off, is the putter in the bag? Yes. I've actually been really loving the performance of this. Once I've got used to the sight line and kind of adjusted myself to lining up without a line, I've been holing out really well. My pace putting's definitely been a lot more consistent because last year 
honestly it wasn't it wasn't good if you've watched any of the vlogs you know it wasn't good it was like ping pong at times and i'm definitely holding a lot more mid-range putts which is definitely what i need to do off my handicap in terms of converting at that range i absolutely adore this it's just really cool to have something in your bag that you know no one else has it's completely custom fit to you it gives me a lot of confidence knowing like it's perfectly set up right and i have no questions in my head about it but would i pay two thousand pounds for this it's a lot of money obviously the putter is going to be five to six hundred if you're looking at a really premium pld putter like this or the equivalent from any other brand so then there's the 1400 on top of that <laughs> which is obviously a lot of money now i think if i had loads of money i would invest in that because personally i love the data i'm like a proper tech nerd so for me to go spend two hours in that fitting facility see everything that's available get all the data try it on every little angle really go into the details was super interesting i also love the fact that i can customize this no one else in the world is going to have a putter like this but i think if you want to pay that money you have to fit into that bracket of i really love the tech this is really interesting i'm going for the experience and also you probably have to be in a place where you think you're pretty happy with your putting you're fairly consistent and it's going to be something that you're going to invest in and use for a long time because you probably don't want to spend two grand and then use the putter for a season like this is an investment it needs to be something that works for a long time but i think just from going through the fitting myself and seeing how well the putter is now matched to my game, it gives you a lot of confidence that this could be something you'd use for a long time. Ping, I've invested a lot of money into this. I know that that fitting procedure is only gonna get better over time. After I went, they contacted me. They wanted to know if there was anything I thought they could get better, if they could adapt it, improve it. So it's only gonna be something that's gonna get better over time. So if you're a tech nerd like me, you love putting, and you want something that you know no one else is gonna have, I think it's worth the experience. If you're just a weekend hacker, maybe not. No, maybe get some lessons first.